All right, Ari, thanks for joining me. We're going to uh, do a prostate embolization today. Wait, which and procedure are we doing? We're doing a prostate artery. Oh, oh, okay. Gotcha. <laughs> and uh, we're going to be showing you sort of our technique and system and what we use here uh, to do this, okay? You Seems can, like you're almost done. Yeah. <laughs> Kathy, would you mind just turning the wheels for me one more time on there? Just turn them. Just, Sonny, this is a radio PAE you're doing, huh? Just turn them. Yeah, so our, we're gonna be doing we're gonna be doing a radio PAE and uh, yep. And so, how did you uh, quickly? I guess how did you decide to do to go radial to use your radial access for this patient? Yeah, so in this patient, we decided because he's five foot six. Uh, no card cardiac risk factors, no history of like a coronary stent, for example, in the past. Uh, so this is sort of an ideal patient from low risk of even having a uh, potential safer stroke. Um, but definitely height was a consideration. Um, for us, uh, height, you know, is obviously an issue. Patients who are five foot 10 and under, those are the patients we typically will offer radial access to. The other thing that we will uh, uh, take into consideration now, of course, is that we have new longer catheters. Should we want to use a longer catheter uh, that go up to over 170 centimeters in length? Which catheter is that? So we're using, uh, for example, today the True Select catheter, and that's what we'll be using uh, to basically get access uh, to the prostatic artery itself. It comes at 175 centimeters in length, uh, 2 0 French. Yeah. So this, so that's a new, uh, that, that's kind of a new option for us. Previously, we we were really only were able to work with uh, a one fifty centimeter two point oh French was the, the max previously. Yeah, and so in your opinion too, what did you think in terms of um, uh, the previous catheters? How often would you say that you know length of the catheter was an issue? So that's a good question. I think over the years, um, so I, I think we first started doing radial PAE maybe four or five years ago. Um, mm -hmm. I think over the years, uh, I've gotten more conservative with how tall I'll go. And the reason being is because, you know, it's one thing just to get your, your uh, microcatheter to the mid prostatic artery, but a lot of times you need to advance it further to be able to coil embolize and astomoses or maybe interrogate a distal pedendal branch or distal obturator branch. And so I found that uh, my height limit has come down further. I first, I think when I first described that, I, I said it's about six feet. And now I'm with you, I'm about 5'10". Uh, and so I was, I was somewhat, you know, we kept getting more and more limited with our current catheter lengths. So now with the 175 centimeter, it, it, really, um, it really expands whom we can perform radial PAE for. Do you find that, uh, and you've used this catheter already, I assume, right? I have on a Thursday. On a th <laughs> first person on a Thursday to yeah, ever use Thursday, this catheter. Yeah. 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 So, I mean, do you think it's, it's, by the way, just to show you here, we already have this. Just, I mean, You're already to, done. You're done with the I don't, <laughs> don't want to switch gears on you too quickly, but we got our wire down. You can see the, the true select going over our wire. Uh, uh, into the prostatic artery proper here. And we're going to take it, like you mentioned, this distal, we'd like to go really as distal as possible, mainly because if we want to avoid proximal non-target as well, seminal vesicle, bladder, et cetera. But if we do need to coil a collateral. So we're putting, we're putting that truce like in the, in the prostatic artery here, and we'll do a run. Our first run will be in an oblique position. Oftentimes we won't even do a, a um, AP if it's very clear in this view. Right. Um, but here you'll see our, our uh, oblique run, and this is a gentleman with a with a hundred gram prostate. Yeah, so that pretty large. Uh, it's pretty nice. So pretty good perfusion to me. Yep. So you can see there actually even in a hundred gram prostate, this artery is only about let's say two two and a half millimeters in size. So having the uh, uh, catheter, which is a small two o French, is really beneficial because we're maintaining really good antegrade flow. But back yep. back to what you were saying. Um, you know, in terms of height and radial access and catheter length, um, this catheter tends to come in 175 and in a shorter 155 length. Here we chose, I don't know if you can see this well or not, but we chose a, uh, a shorter length of the 155 because for his height, we don't need the 175. Uh, if we were doing your PAERI, 
I think we'd probably have to go to the 175. Yeah, maybe. I mean, it raises another issue, though, because when you go to that longer catheter, you also need a longer base calf. Assuming yes. that you want your catheter to be, you want your base calf to be sitting in the hypogastric artery, right? That's kind of the technique that we, we both use. Um, yeah. And, you know, that's how you get the best support for your advancing your microcatheter. So that's, that's a problem that I've encountered because if you go to a person over six feet, uh, your 125 cm base calf may not reach into the hypogastric artery. So what are you typically using in that situation? Uh, to, well, honestly, I haven't, I haven't found a solution yet. What I'm really looking for when we're talking to our supply folks is I'm looking for uh, something around a 150 centimeter, either Vert, Bernstein, or Compi type shape. Um, uh, I think that that's going to be ideal, but I haven't identified it yet. Yeah, I would agree. Even something even just slightly shorter, 140 might be good to yep. have. 140 would be, would be good. 35 cm hanging out. Yep. Um, yep. Just so you know, we're already embolizing. So yep. in this situation, we won't need to use any coils. Uh, so we're yep. just embolizing with 100 and 250 micron particles, which you can see here. We're getting great staining of the, of the, of the prostate gland itself. So uh, this is uh, a really nice uh, example of really just a, a really hypervascular gland. Yeah. When but, you, sorry, you go ahead. I was going to say, let's, let's go back to the anatomy in this patient for a second because I, sure. I saw your initial run. It looked like he had a, um, a prostatic artery, a pretty big one arising from, uh, you know, and so let's, in this particular patient, you have a little bit of a variant, right? So you have the inferior glute that's coming off the posterior division with the superior glute. You got and it. So your anterior division is really only made up, it looks like, uh, and I don't see an obturator either, so I'm assuming. I don't. Uh, coronal yeah, mortis. so it's made up of just a pedendal, yeah. uh, and off that pedendal really is a vesicle prostatic trunk, that very right. first branch. Yeah, uh, and so, it looked look like you got in there pretty easily with your wire and and the and the true select uh, track pretty well all the way through that tortuosity right there. Yeah, and actually that that tortuosity is pretty considerable. I mean, that's what we yeah. see, as you know, is the prostate gets larger, um, the tortuosity basically just becomes more redundant in the pattern of the prostatic artery. So. Uh, getting down distally here, uh, that was uh, really critical. Do you, you know, when you're, how often would you say that you're also using adjunctive techniques like coils, for example? Yeah, so I, I found that I use it more and more, uh, but I'd still, even so, it's still probably only about 40% of the time. 40% of the time? Yeah. Are you, um, so, and this brings up an interesting point. So when you're utilizing 2 catheters yep. in that situation, uh, what coils are you using? Having any difficulty with getting certain coils through? I mean, not really so much interested in brand names as much as I am just yeah. interested in, yeah, what your experiences or challenges are. So we, we tend to use the same 018 pushable coils each time. Mm -hmm. uh, and we don't, we don't have any issues with them in 2 catheters. Uh, they, they go through, through, through pretty easily. Okay. So we, I know we are limited right now, and I'm not a big, I don't use a lot of detachable coils in general. Yeah. Uh, but I know that there's there's a, a little bit of an issue with having um, a an old, a detachable coil long enough to go through the 175 cm microcatheter. Yes, yes. And also, my other challenge I think I've seen is with the two O catheters that are on the market right now. What are you using for your base wire in terms of diameter? Are you limited right now before True Select, or how do you feel? Yeah. So I, in general, I um, I I've been using 014 as my first wire. Mm -hmm. uh, and that's that was you know it's been that way for a while my second choices are 016 so um and i don't usually go to an 018 wire so uh, you know i i think i i haven't really been that limited uh, up till but, now and, and but i yeah. can use the same wires all go through the true select so it's kind of I, I use my same wire array yeah so for myself i think you know we i was using predominantly an 018 uh, gt wire yeah uh, so now i can still use it the same wire in nice. this duo catheter, which is nice. And then of course the other wire, the one I used during this case, for example, was uh, an Asahi uh, uh, wire. The Meister. But, yeah. yeah, the Meister, and, and that works very well in terms of its radio opacity. And then uh, the other wire I tend to use a lot is the, which is not so much a, uh, a problem from Boston Scientific in terms of its size, because it's 014, is the Transcend wire. So. Right. The transcend really hasn't changed. That could be used, obviously, as you know, in any of these, or just like the fathom. Yep. Um, but I do sometimes prefer to use an 018, and I think with 018 coils and also with uh, 018 uh, wires, it is nice if you want to go back and forth because not everybody wants to open up a two up rope to a two French catheter 
every time in the very beginning. Some people may reserve it for a smaller size gland uh, right. or smaller arteries. Yeah. How about you? What's your feeling on that? On what size catheter? Um, yeah. I tend to go to the 2.0 uh, immediately. And the reason being is because, uh, you know, you, a lot of times you start with bigger arteries and you can say, oh, that's, that's pretty large. But then again, you might want to get into anastomosis and place a coil. Um, yep. Or you might want to get into one of those distal branches. And I find for those, a 2.0 is beneficial. So Okay, great. Go straight Do you, <clears throat> you know, one of the things I'm doing here is you can tell we've got pretty good stasis already yeah. um, with these particles. And sometimes we'll finish up. I know you're a fan of this technique too, is sometimes we'll put a little gel foam slurry or paste in afterwards. Yeah. Um, what I've found is, you know, we use a 1cc medallion to get it through there um, because obviously mm -hmm. that paste can be very thick and you'll see it here coming out in just a second. But yeah. Um, with this catheter, I've not seen any difference in the ability to do that as well, even though we've also, uh, gone to a 2.0 French catheter as well. Have you noticed any challenge with that as well? Cause just, you know, here it comes, here's that gel foam coming out. You can tell yep. by the, the increased density and this will be completely static here when we're done. Yep. No, I, you know, I think, um, you know, it's possible to, to get it clogged. Uh, I haven't seen it in True Select. I have seen it in 2.0 French catheters in the past. But a mm -hmm. lot of that has to do with um, how much you're putting in there and how quickly you'll flush with saline. Uh, yeah. So, um, you know, I think once you get used to using the gel foam slurry, it can be managed pretty easily without, without getting stuck each time. Without getting stuck. Yeah. I think that's a, a really good point. You know, what is the... For you these days with PA, um, you know, are you pretty much, you know, I know obviously you have a busier PA practice than most, so uh, this may be fairly active, but when you speak to other folks and you, where, what are you seeing is really the, the dominant types of cases people are doing large glands like this, or, you know, what are the typical kinds of cases people are getting? Are they getting surgical failures or contraindications? What are you seeing is, is the most common uh, type of case? Yeah, I think in general, I would say uh, larger glands, maybe larger glands who are also anticoagulated. Mm -hmm. um, and then patients, and then a lot of them are really difficult patients, patients with a lot of comorbidities that um, urologists didn't want to put under uh, a general or spinal anesthesia. Um, okay. So um, those tend to be the, I mean, they're kind of the patients that we would say are the good uh, patients for urologists to send over initially okay. uh so so i think those are the patients that people are doing uh and okay. when they start when they start out their practice before they start getting self-referrals and such okay um all right sometimes this happens to be hypogastric i think we won't have a problem getting in but very very rarely you'll get hypogastric arteries which are really tortuous and from a radial perspective for example it can be a little bit um uh, challenging even when you get down the thoracic aorta to the pelvis to say Hey, let's get into this uh, hypogastric artery. There's certain certain times that, or certain catheter wire shapes configurations you use for those patients who have really sort of sharp origins to their, or acutely angled origins to their hypogastrics. Yeah. So uh, looks like you got in there. That's great. Um, you know, I think I it, you're limited a little bit, right? Because you, as far as the length catheter that you need from a radial approach there's not a lot of catheters at a 125 length, at least not in our inventory uh, here at yeah. the hospital. Um, yeah. So I rely a lot on wires. Uh, and so I really like a, um, I like a shapeable glide wire. Uh, okay. so I can put a, a, a custom shape in there to get me into a tough uh, hypogastric origin. Okay, so you like that for sure. I, mean, I, I would agree with you. I think that's, that's probably a nice way to get in. So one thing I'm going to do here is I'm going to repeat my run just because I'm a little high. Yeah, I'd like to just see a little bit lower. Uh, yeah, exactly. I think it's a little bit lower and just, and then just uh, repeat this run. So just to recap on the last side, what size particles did you end up using over there? Yeah, so I used hundreds to start, then uh, 250s really to finish. Uh, and then I used a little bit of gel pump paste at the very end. And what's your cue to switch from the hundreds to the two fifties? Yeah, it's a good question. I will say that you know, for me, once I see the absence of that early sprinkable staining, then I'll go to the hundreds. I really want to get, uh, um, you know, uh, get rid of that staining, get really good distal uh, embolization with the smaller beads. I think one of the challenges with using 
bees with too big of a range size is that we end up with, uh, you know, early uh, embolization. And I think that, that early endpoint is really what I'm trying to avoid. Now, right. traded for some, obviously, maybe increased post-operative symptoms in terms of urinary frequency or dysuria. But overall, I think I'm very happy with really the clinical results. And I think that's something, I mean, you know this, everyone tracks their own clinical practice and really has to figure out what's working for them. But um, in the absence of seeing collaterals that I'm worried about, I will start with that uh, 100, 100 micron size. How about yourself? Uh, yeah, I mean, I tend to use either 200s or 400s, depending on the size of the gland. I think in this particular case, I probably would have used a little bit of a larger particle um, just because it was a larger gland. But it's, yeah. a lot of that, you know, has to do with how much you're able to support those patients in the, in the short term after the procedure. So. I think that's, you're very right. In the perioperative time, that's really when, as you know, yeah. that's when you want to uh, uh, make sure that that they're well taken care of, yep. you know? Uh, so here, I'm in that answer. Yeah. Yeah. Let's so see what you're right now. Yep. Yeah, so, so I mean, I'll leave the wire right there just to have a supporting discussion. So at this point is, you know, I'm, I'm in what I think is probably either an umbilical or vesicoprostatic or just another branch of the anterior division. But what I'm looking for here is, as I'm in this branch right here, I know the prostatic is, is right near the tip of this catheter. It could be just distal, just proximal. Um, if we go back to the anatomy on the previous run here, you'll see this really well. It's a nice prostatic that's, that you can see there. Just over the shadow of the external iliac artery, you can see that prostatic actually yep. across anteriorly. Uh, so what I'll do is actually, once I'm here, even if I'm not in it completely, I'll just do a run from here. I think that doing a run through the base cat, through the microcatheter and identifying, is it below this vessel? Is it above this vessel? That looks like Where is it? Uh, a pedendal there. Is that a yeah, so it looks like I'm in the pedendal artery, right? Yeah. And there's you your see where the prostatic, prostatic is, it's right there, exactly. So just by doing that run through the microcatheter, I was able to see that. And as you know, sometimes the pedendal, uh, it, the angle of origin off the prostatic in an RA or LAO may not be ideal. So what I'm going to do is I'll switch a little bit here to an AP or sometimes a contralateral oblique, and I'll be able to see that origin even a little bit better. All right. And you will do a run here, and there you'll see it. So... Now the prostatic goes off to the left side of the screen because of course you've taught me this trick, it's anterior. So there's the prostatic. So what we'll do is I'll just set this on tray. So I think, you know, using the ability to inject and do imaging through the microcatheter, honestly, is, is really important. Um, something that I think is maybe not as often uh, uh, to talk about or discuss this really, how can you get good imaging through the microcatheter um, and then make your decision rather than like just fishing around and repeating your run or your base catheter in so many different angles. Right. I think right. that can be very frustrating, especially if you want to have a lot of throughput, you know, and you want to be able to, uh, to do a certain number of cases and not, you know, struggle all day. Um, not to say that we won't struggle with this. <laughs> Yeah, I think that's a good point. I think, you know, one of the main things I try to teach the younger guys, the fellows coming through is that you should have a good reason for everything you do. I mean, don't, don't, don't just fish around with uh, angles and different obliquities. Like think about what is the purpose? What is the reasoning behind why I'm doing this obliquity? Yeah, I think that's really key. Do you think that's a common trunk right there with those two? You know, it's interesting you say that. Uh, it oh, probably there it is. is. There it is. I think you're right. I think it is. I think it probably was a common front, which is why that wire was catching it. Yeah. Uh, and then the question here is how distal, but you can watch this catheter just go. Yeah. It'll just go. Uh, unbelievable. So, made it all the way down that far. Now I'm going to go back to a REO projection because for me, that's the best to see whether or not we see rectal or pedendal collaterals. Wouldn't mind just click that. You can just click it off, Kathy. Thank you. You can just click it off. Sonny, I'm going to have to sign off here, unfortunately, because uh, I got a clinic appointment waiting. But uh, no I, problem. That was a. Uh, this is a very fast uh, PAE. Um, impressive. Yeah, I think uh, here we'll do this last run here on the right side. You'll see. Just yep. to confirm when. I do appreciate you already joining us, and uh, enjoy the rest of your day in clinic. Yeah, look at that. I just want to point out that stain that's still present on the opposite on the contralateral side that you saw before its subtraction. That's, yeah, um, even before subtraction. Yeah, that's that's the reassurance that that stain is still present, hasn't washed out. 
uh, is a good sign that you've got really good stasis on that side of the prostate. Yeah. And I'm really happy also to see how distal this catheter tip is right at the capsule of the gland. A great spot so, for him. Yeah. Really great for him. So I think from here, we'll do our embo. We don't see any non-target vessels. So we'll embo yeah. from here and then we'll wrap up with a radial bed. Sounds good. Simple. Thanks. Sorry very much. Okay. All right. All right. You take care. All right. Bye-bye.